Hey guys, everything technology here, and this is probably the first metal phone that feels cheap. The LG G5 is probably LG's most innovative phone yet, but most poorly constructed in my opinion. I'm not trying to say that um, it's made out of inexpensive materials or anything like that. What I'm trying to say here is that LG made a phone made out of metal that feels like plastic. But anyway, let's talk about the design of this phone. So when I first held it, um, I noticed that it's a fully metal phone that feels like plastic. And another thing is that it's more curved on the sides, which kind of reminds me of the G3. And when turning this phone around, you notice that we now have a fingerprint scanner on the back that doubles up as a button, kind of like the V10, and that there's two back facing cameras. One weird thing is that the volume rockers are not on the back anymore, which I'm not really a big fan of. The overall biggest design change is modularity. So now the bottom of the phone is removable and in there you can access a removable battery which is pretty impressive because I don't know any other metal phone that allows you to remove the battery. And also you can add different modules such as a camera grip which adds more battery life to your phone and also allows um, you to have more of a point and shoot experience with the camera app. Basically all these different modules allow you to add more functionality to the G5. It's impressive but in my opinion it wasn't well executed by LG. Let me explain. First of all, when LG first launched a G5, they only launched two modules with it, and one of them was not even available in the US and even in other countries. Second of all, these modules are way too overpriced, and third of all, why would you only launch two modules? But I'm still gonna give them props for making the first consumer ready modular phone. Now, this brings me to durability. For the most part, I've kept the G5 under a slick wrap skin as well as a UAG case. We've done a great job, and if you do wanna pick one up for yourself, I'll be sure to link both of them down in the description. But when I did decide to take off the slick wrap skin as well as a UAG case to film the bureau for this video, um, I dropped it on concrete and the side of the phone chipped. And another thing to mention is that a lot of people are having issues in where um, there's a gap between the modular area and the top part of the phone. Like me, when I first got this phone, there was no gap at all, but for some reason, there is one now. So I would recommend not to keep this exposed under any sorts of liquids because it could possibly get in the gap and damage your phone. Moving on, like the G4, you get um, expandability here. So first you get 32 gigabytes of internal storage, which you can expand up to 200 gigabytes with a micro SD card. With the G4, you're now getting a 5.3 inch 1440p IPS display, which is a little bit smaller than the G4, but I don't mind at all. In fact, it's a little bit sharper now. It's coming at 554 PPI. And one thing that I noticed is that for some reason, it looks really good, but I feel like it's cheaply made. The reason I'm saying that is that with a lot of cheap LCD displays, you notice that if you put a little bit more pressure than usual on the display, there'll be a little bit of distortion. And if you're watching movies with a lot of blacks or even a TV show, you notice that some part of the screens are brighter than the others. It's kind of weird. I don't know why we're getting that with this display, but nevertheless, the colors look great and it gets really bright, so it's enjoyable to use outside. Now, since this is LG's latest flagship, you're of course getting the latest and greatest specs. And that is a Snapdragon A20, a Adreno 530 GPU and four gigabytes of RAM. With all this, you're getting super smooth performance with Marshmallow, meaning everything is snappy and multitasking is surprisingly great. Since we're talking about software, I'm not digging LG's skin because there's no app drawer like iOS, which made everything so cluttered and hard to find. So I decided to install Google Now Launcher. My favorite thing about this phone is definitely the two cameras on the back. So you're first getting a main one, which is a 60 megapixel sensor um, with a f1.8 aperture that is capable of recording 4K videos at 30 FPS. Then you're getting the second camera, which is an 8 megapixel wide angle camera that is capable of recording videos at 1080p at 30 FPS. And lastly is that 8 megapixel front facing camera that is also capable of recording videos at 1080p at 30 FPS. Now the G5 made me realize how useful it is to have two cameras in the back and now which every phone has that feature. Even though the 8 megapixel camera isn't that sharp, just like a lot of people, I found myself using it more than the 16 megapixel camera just because of how impressively wide it gets. As for quality, in good lighting you get sharp pictures with both cameras but the 16 megapixel main camera is noticeably sharper and in low light, just like a lot of smartphone cameras, you're going to get grain. And for video, the main camera did a great job, but you still get that weird wobbly effect, but it's not nearly as bad as the G4. Battery life is very comparable to the G4, even though you're getting a slightly smaller battery, but then you gotta remember, you're also getting a slightly smaller screen as well. So on a normal school day, I get about seven hours of usage with about three and a half hours to four, to four hours of on screen, 
which is pretty good. Um, it actually kind of reminds me of the same battery life I used to get on my Galaxy S7. Overall, when the G5 was first announced, I had really high expectations, but now that I've owned it for almost a month, I'm a little bit disappointed. The reason being is that its key feature, modularity, wasn't well executed by LG. But again, I give them props for taking that risk and doing something different. And that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. And if you did, then be sure to leave me a thumbs up down below and also comment down below if you have any feedback and subscribe if you like to see more content like this. Bye. Stop, stop.